Hi everyone, Alan Pan here. I've gotten a ton of requests for a how-to video and a parts list for Mjolnir, so here it is. In this video, I'm going to go over how I made Thor's hammer, and if you click the link in the description, there's an Instructable 2 that has the full parts list, the code, uh, links to where to buy things, everything. Uh, so, let's get started. First, you'll need a Thor costume hammer. Uh, I got this one from Amazon. I removed the plastic handle, so I was just left with the hollow hammer head. Next I used a utility knife to cut along this decorative line, which hides the seam for the lid really well. Here's the dismantled transformer. Make sure you hang on to the coils. Next, I cut rectangular holes in the hammerhead for the bottom of the transformer to stick out. I used drawer poles to mount the transformer in the hammerhead. I had to cut the inner part of the handle to fit around the transformer. Next I cut some scrap 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood to fit inside the hammerhead and made mounting holes for the drawer poles. And on the other side of the wood I drilled pilot holes for mounting the handle. The handle is a 10 inch long, 3 quarter inch galvanized steel pipe. Uh, here I'm using a Dremel to cut a rectangular hole in the side of the pipe for the fingerprint scanner to show through. Once the hole was cut, I used JB Weld to permanently mount the fingerprint scanner. I had to trim some plastic off the side of the scanner for it to fit in the pipe. Later I found out that the metal casing of the fingerprint scanner is actually connected to its ground pin, which meant that the entire handle was then connected to ground since they're touching. This made capacitive sensing a nightmare later. Uh, if you want to use capacitive sensing the handle, make sure nothing connected to electrical ground is touching the handle. I remounted the thinner secondary wiring into the transformer. The primary has fewer windings but will draw more current. The secondary has more windings and will draw less current. I've used the secondary since it'll be easier to control a high voltage rather than a high current. Next I used wood screws and bolts to mount the handle and the electromagnet to the plywood. I also ended up needing a bunch of washers to make sure that the handle flange and the bolts holding the electromagnet didn't touch, since the magnet will be in direct contact with the earth, which will also mess up capacitive sensing if it's connected to the handle. Next I mounted the lead acid batteries. They had to be slanted a degree or two to fit inside the hammerhead properly. Uh, this was really challenging because I didn't have enough room to make a sturdy mechanical mount and I wanted the batteries to be replaceable later if I wanted to upgrade them for lithium. I ended up mounting them with a combination of hot glue, epoxy putty, and super glue. And they've held up surprisingly well so far and they should be pretty easy to remove later. The magnets here, 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 and here are what keep the lid closed, uh, but they could work better. They're probably uh, not aligned very well. Also, I'd like to point out that to make the lid close flush against the hammerhead, um, I actually had to file away some material here in the corner. That's how tight the batteries are fit in there, that I actually had to uh, make some parts of the lid a little thinner so that it would close down all the way.
The leather handle wrap is from uh, a tennis store nearby. I got really lucky I was able to pick it up for about $4. Uh, it's kept on with double-sided tape. So I'll just take this coupling off and I'll unwrap it to show you. This is just stuck on with double-sided tape. All the way up and down. You can tell it's pretty banged up. Every time I take this out in public, um, it gets abused pretty badly because people, you know, they're pulling up as hard as they can. So every time I pretty much have to rewrap the leather handle. Um, you can see here's a window cut out for the fingerprint scanner and it's getting pretty ragged around the edges. Here's the 5 volt Arduino Pro Mini. Uh, this controls the entire hammer. It's powered by four AA batteries uh, connected to the raw pin. The fingerprint scanner is powered off of the Arduino. You can see the four wires uh, here and here and here. Um, it's connected to pins 4 and 5 of the Arduino Pro Mini and communicates using software serial. A problem I kept running into that wasn't covered by tutorials was that resetting the Arduino doesn't reset the fingerprint scanner and opening the serial monitor inside the Arduino IDE resets the board. So that means that opening the serial monitor causes the Arduino to reset but not the fingerprint scanner uh, so they stop communicating properly. Uh, when that happens the serial monitor doesn't display messages that you need to see to enroll fingerprints correctly. Uh, I didn't really find a good fix for this, I just started uh, opening the serial monitor at the same time as plugging the FTDI cable into the Arduino so that the reset would happen right around when everything powered up and sometimes the timing just worked out okay. So there's probably a better fix out there somewhere, uh, that's just what I did because I only needed to enroll my two thumbprints so it wasn't that bad. Here's the capacitive sensor, I just got it off of eBay and you can see that it's connected to the handle with a wire and conduct tack, a conductive sticky tack. Uh, I use that since it's pretty difficult to solder wires to large pieces of metal like that floor flange um, because the, the metal just acts as a heat sink and cools the solder down before it can make a good electrical connection. Now you'll notice that um, there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, the capacitive sensor is powered with its own uh, little lithium battery over there. And again, that's because I accidentally connected the handle to the Arduino ground through the fingerprint scanner uh, case. That, that metal kind of frame around this window is actually connected to ground. And since it's touching the hammer handle, uh, the hammer handle is also grounded. So capacitive sensing um, doesn't work if it's sharing the same uh, ground and VCC as the Arduino. So the capacitive sensor actually had to get its own separate power supply and on top of that um, it actually can only communicate to the Arduino through this opto isolator which is connected to pin 9 of the Arduino. So you can avoid all this complicated stuff if you can just figure out a way if you're using a fingerprint scanner um, to just not have that metal case touch the metal in the handle. Uh, you might be able to use like a, like a really nice insulating epoxy or um, covering that covering the metal frame here around the fingerprint scanner with like um, like an enamel or a varnish of some kind before you mount it in there. Uh, another thing that I had to do to make the capacitive sensor work is you'll notice uh, this wire here actually leads all the way down and connects to the, the metal core of the electromagnet which then when it's sitting you know on a manhole cover or steel plate is connected to uh, literal ground. So if I found that if I didn't do that uh, the capacitive sensor would act kind of erratically uh, so, I mean, <laughs> capacitive sensors are just kind of a pain. So here's the electromagnet. This is where um, the two wire leads coming off of the electromagnet are. And um, these are the flyback diodes. These are important so that uh, you have a way to dissipate the back EMF when the magnet turns off. Um, so that it doesn't go back to your solid state relay or through your uh, batteries or whatever. You can see the connections on the batteries are uh, disconnect crimp terminals uh, and a wire nut over there. And that was so that they would be easily disconnected and uh, I can reconnect them with alligator cables to charge them in parallel. They're connected in series normally to power the electromagnet and I can disconnect the wires and reconnect them with alligator cables in parallel to charge them. Uh, it's a really awkward setup but I didn't really have any better ideas for how to connect the batteries in series but also be able to charge them in parallel. Uh, so again, kind of quick and ugly but it works. And this is the solid state relay, it's a Kritom 60 volt 10 amp solid state relay and it's just taped down with uh, random bits of tape that uh, I thought would be a little more heat resistant. 
Um, I was worried about it overheating in the hammerhead, but it's only handling about an amp, so it doesn't even get hot to the touch. So you can see these wires come back here, and it's controlled with pin 10 of the Arduino. And in general, all the wires you can see are covered in like hot glue or electrical tape or heat shrink wrap tubing. That's just to make sure that nothing's shorting, that none of the electrical connections break or snap. You really, really want to avoid shorts uh, in a setup like this. <laughs> So I hope that was kind of clear, and again, click the link in the description for an instructable with the full parts list and code. And make sure to subscribe so you know when my next video comes out, where I take Mjolnir to Stanley's Kamikaze and announce my next project. Uh, thanks for watching!